Sorry about that. Usually this is very professional here, but Mitch is, Mitch yeah. is something yeah. else, so <laughs> I apologize for him. So this is Season 5, Episode 9, Take 2 with David, my father. Well, welcome back to Duke of Paul's Corner, where the fish are cold and the purples are warmer. Head up to the creek in my truck if you want to. Hop on in the bed, just move the cooler over. David Kapals, good to, ha- good Re- to have you. Really? Very really? good to have you. Really? Yeah. I'm just glad you dressed up today. Yeah. I... Welcome to another exciting episode of Kapal's Corner. I'm your host, Benny Kapal. With me today is the apple doesn't fall far, uh, my father, David. Yes, it is. David Kapal, welcome. Thank you for being on. So I know you're up here on this and you're thinking, wow, my favorite son's show, you know, he okay. takes over the business. My favorite yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just just amazing, and I you're you're not you're not wrong. Um, you know, he follows me in the funeral home. People are talking. The, you know, the the sexy Kapals in the funeral home now. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about that. So I'm the fourth generation. You're third generation. Correct. Um, you've been you've been doing this over thirty years, licensed, more like forty years, almost forty. Forty years. Um, but, but in essence, I've been doing it 50 years. Yeah, you've been, I mean, yeah. You you started a lot earlier. Back in those days, you could, um, you know, when the printing press was still. Correct, thing. correct. And and um, the funeral home was also an ambulance did, service. Did you did you pick the shirt or did mom pick the shirt? Mom picked the shirt. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty well dressed by my, my, my wife. It looks good, looks good. I don't know, I don't know if you'd like that if I showed up in that with a funeral. This is not a funeral. Oh, okay. This is this uh, your show. this is your your program. Well, welcome to the barn. And, and yeah, right. Welcome no, to the barn. What is this place called? This is called the barn. Yeah, but it's also called what? I'm sorry. I Kapal's, my name's on the Kapal's title. Diggers Den. My name Den. on the title. It's called Kapal's Diggers Den. It's on the title. Yeah. All right. But it so, be- anyways, before David, it was let's, his. All right. It was. And and that's an important fact to remember. Okay. Um, but what I'm saying to you is. You are important. Yeah, absolutely. But you are fourth generation, which puts me at third generation. Well, they say, you know, second the best. Third okay, if if if, if 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 you and really want to believe that, that's fine. Okay, well, I'm just let's I'm go just, with that. Okay. I mean, so, what else important things do you so have to ask me? So, let's talk about me? funeral directing. So, you decided to do funeral directing. Did you I, always want to do funeral directing? Well, it comes on a very slow as you grow up. Um, I was the only son of my father, mm-hmm. and that puts a little pressure from the community on hoping that there'll be another generation. So as, as, I, as I, as I, he doesn't want to get, let me talk. Sorry. As, as I grew up, mm-hmm. that question was posed to me quite a bit. Are you going to follow in your dad's footsteps? By the time I was in my junior year of high school, my dad gave me the ultimatum kindly. And he had always, up to that point, said, don't go into the business for me. Go into the business because you want to make a difference. But when I got to my junior year, he said, well, Dave, it's getting to the point where I need to know, Mm -hmm. are you going to do this or not? Because if you're not, I'm going to have to find someone to take over someday. And that, that was when I made the decision. So basically when I was 18, the decision was made. And from that point on, the course was set. Most rewarding part of being a funeral director and most challenging part, most in your in, opinion, of being, or at least in your perspective of a funeral director. Number one, making a difference, helping someone walk through a path that's very difficult and being a small part of that recovery period and watching them go beyond and be able to survive that loss. Hardest thing, children, Um, and especially after you have children. Um, There is no rationality to either young people or children dying, and I've always said that. If, If there was anything that I would pray that I would never have to do again is bury another child. Um, and 
uh, it is very, very difficult because you don't have the answers. Oh, absolutely. How is it to be in the, in the shadow of your dad? Well, that's very different than what you're dealing with because in my history, my father died when I was actually your age, right. the age you are right now. Um, so the transition, which is a normal transition that I watched with my grandfather and my father, was... Fast forwarded. Well, kind of, but it was different because Grandpa was in the profession until he was in his 70s, and there was always that conflict that some people would want Norman mm -hmm. versus Bill. Versus in, my, in my case, it was Bill was taken out of play, and so it was people adapting to the idea that I was the one that were taking care of him. And profoundly, for probably the f first five years... After my father's death, I was called Bill on, on many occasions, mm -hmm. and then they would apologize, you know. And I said, no, that's an honor. You, you, you see my father in me. But uh, I really didn't have that transition to deal with. Right. I just had to step up. Well, let's talk about a little bit about something. So you're a funeral director. We know that I'm a funeral director. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have theater in, in common. Oh, yeah. Uh, my my two loves in high school was was the arts. Mm -hmm. I was very, very active in the music program and the band. My favorite part of that was marching, not concert. But I also was in theater from eighth grade on. Um, and I'm very proud to say I, I achieved what they called the thespianship degree. And I had an honor braid for that the day I graduated. And on my desk, on my death certificate, that's a Freudian. On your death certificate. Yeah, that's a Freudian. It said, on my, to on my, my favorite <laughs> son. Yeah, right. On, on my uh, graduation certificate, I have a gold seal with that on it. Um, it's profound that I say that because high school was difficult for me. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, that's probably why I said that. Favorite, favorite part you ever played? Favorite part was Speed in The Odd Couple, my senior year, oh. which was dominated by men, mm -hmm. which was rather challenging because you didn't have a lot of people, men in those days, that would go into theater. And in fact, our director was one of the characters, and it was, it was very successful, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I, my, my most enjoyable thing in my young life with theater was we... we now, we're talking 75, 6, 7, 8, before I went into college. Mm -hmm. um, the director of the um, drama program w literally opened her house, and we had a haunted house. Well, that's cool. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And, of course, because I was the undertaker's son, I was the vampire. Oh. So, um, surprise, surprise. And all the theatrical makeup I had about two hours worth of that and they I had a casket made for me because I I've never been in a casket don't want to be because I'm going to spend some time in one someday so I had a local carpenter make me what's called a toe pincher which is the old octagon mm -hmm. caskets yep. you yep. see in the west yep. and uh, a coffin. she had a bay window and they put that in the in the casket in the bay window i went inside the casket i had the candy the kids had to come up and knock on the casket and i would open the lid and give them the candy uh we also had a ghost that sat in a chair and would engulf kids uh we had a witch we had um a pirate um it was just a lot of fun sounds, sounds like a lot of fun and then the, and, fun. and the last thing we have in common is we're both singers yes you were in barbershop i was in barbershop for quite a few years until um, my dad passed. Yeah. And then I, I, I had to devote, by that time, I had all four of you sons, right. um, and I had to devote myself strictly into running the business. And it took uh, a good five years to get it all leveled out because it, it, it was just me. Oh, my, sure. my grandfather had had Alzheimer's and was out of the business in the late 70s. Oh, absolutely, and I can't imagine, I, I, you know, I always think it's almost ironic when a funeral director dies because it's like how do you actually have a funeral for a funeral director well it's missing well if it's anything like it was with my dad and my grandfather it's a loss to the community which is again something we never really don't realize uh 
We don't realize our impact. We really don't. And it's good we don't because it isn't something we should dwell on. But I found it very profound that in the visitation of my father, it was more you're going to continue to run the funeral home than it was, I'm sorry, your dad died. When there's because, a room full because, of because, because they always assumed that my dad would be there to do that. Right. And he's not there. No, no, he's taken on a play. Yeah. Well, Dave, I appreciate you coming. Yep. It's very nice to see you. Mm hmm. Yeah. This is, welcome yeah, to yeah, this yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a pretty nice place. Thanks for coming. Hey, it's my honor. Thank you for watching another exciting episode of Kapal's Corner. I'm Benny. This is David. Generations. Good night. Good night.